I'm going to play a two-minute excerpt of a podcast interview with an individual named Dr. Blair Peters uh, at the uh, Oregon Health Science University in Portland. He calls himself the queer surgeon, and he boasts about the shocking, fully experimental, irreversible, and life-altering invasive procedures that he and others are performing on children to surgically modify their genitals. I want everyone to hear this in his own words, not mine, and take special note of the frank admission that no one has published any studies on these shocking procedures, and they are, quote, as he says, just kind of learning and figuring out what works, unquote. Later in this video, uh, he admits to performing, quote, huge reconstructive surgery, rearranging anatomy, and then acknowledges that they know almost nothing about the outcomes for these children. And quote, he says, we'll know more in five to 10 years, and quote, it'll be fascinating to see how all these kids turn out. Wow. With unanimous consent, I will enter the link to this full video in the record of our hearing because everyone should watch it. It is absolutely nightmarish and surreal to hear the description of what these people are doing to the bodies of young children. Please play that clip and I will say viewer discretion is advised. So 80% or so of my practice is gender affirming surgery. Um, so I do facial, chest surgery and genital surgery. Um, but the majority of my practice and sort of where my passion lies is really genital surgery cases. So I do a lot of vaginoplasty and a lot of phalloplasty. I would just say they're expanding in either direction. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of adolescents um, presenting for surgical intervention, but also a lot of people that are like in their 70s sometimes coming in for genital surgery and then everything in between. Um, but the, the adolescents for sure present some unique challenges. Um, obviously, there's great evidence supporting pubertal suppression for a whole variety of benefits. Um, but the one thing that is very new is genital surgery in someone that has underwent pubertal suppression. Um, not so much an issue in um, someone with assigned female at birth anatomy that undergoes a phalloplasty because we're creating something with you know, free tissue transfer or flap anyway, but a much bigger issue for an individual that's undergoing a penile inversion vaginoplasty um, because we use all of that tissue to basically create the vulva as well as line the internal vaginal canal. And as a specialty, um, those of us that do a fairly high volume of genital gender affirming surgery, you know, we've maybe done a couple, a handful of pubertally suppressed adolescents as a field and no one's published on it yet. Um, OHSU is, we're just putting our first series together as we're kind of learning and figuring out what works. Um, but it's really changing things um, because you don't have enough tissue to line the vaginal canal. So you either have to take a skin graft or take skin from elsewhere or use an artificial product. Um, the way that we're dealing with it is by using a robot and we're basically performing intra-abdominal um, components of the surgery. So we're using peritoneum, which is the inner lining of the abdomen to line most of the vaginal canal. And by doing that, that allows us to use all of the remaining tissue externally to create a vulva um, and try to make also an aesthetic result. So I'm going to speak the truth here plainly, and I think the vast majority of the American people understand and agree with what I'm going to say. What you've just heard there is a little sample of barbarism. This is the mutilation of children, and it should be prohibited by our law. This so-called gender-affirming care is anything but affirming and caring, and the language matters. This is adults deciding to permanently alter the bodies of children who do not have the capacity to make like life-altering decisions on their own. And here's some more plain truth that everybody acknowledged until about 15 minutes ago. It's been plainly observed and fully respected by every culture for all of recorded history. Sex isn't something you are assigned at birth. It is a natural prenatal development that occurs when every unborn child is in the mother's womb. No one can surgically free themselves from this objective and obvious fact of life or free anyone else from it. But today, we see adults inflicting unspeakable harms on helpless children to affirm the adults' own worldview, that gender is somehow fluid, that sex can be surgically altered, that there are no lasting consequences of all this madness as a result of the sex change procedures. What is even more alarming 
is that the central tenet of the transgender movement and its allies is to exclude parents as much as possible from making decisions about the health of their own children. Medical professionals and in schools increasingly see parents as, quote, transphobic bullies who must be prevented from standing in the way of the medical sexual transition of their own kids. We saw this in my home state of Louisiana recently where Children's Hospital of New Orleans laughed in the face of a young girl's parents when they attempted to intervene as doctors sought to transition their daughter without their consent. To the left, these aren't your children, see? They, they are the state's children, and the state should be making the parenting decisions. Let's also be clear about something else. Even a parent has no right to sexually transition a young child. Our American legal system recognizes the important public interest in protecting children from abuse and physical harm. No matter how liberated you may be, you still don't have the legal right to ignore seatbelt safety laws or minimum driving age laws or drinking and smoking laws for your kids. No parent has a constitutional right to injure their children. Of course, the reach of radical sexual identity politics isn't limited to young children alone. We see this extended to young adults, especially at the university level now. The modern left applauds men competing in women's college athletics. We see universities captured by academics advancing this ideology on students across our country. Whether it's by scalpel or by social coercion from teachers, professors, administrators, and left-wing media, it's an aggressive attempt to transition the young people of our children, uh, of our country. They're doing this psychologically, and now they're doing it even physically. Something has gone terribly wrong, and, and deep down, everybody in this country knows it. Today, we want to shed light on what this problem is, and hopefully how we can address the problem. Contrary to what some of my Democrat colleagues believe, the scourge of radical gender ideology is very real. The efforts to cover up what's being done to our children are extreme, and the science is on the side of what we all know deep down is morally and ethically right. I look forward to the testimony from our witnesses as we unravel the narrative surrounding this so-called gender-affirming care. And I now recognize... We'll convert your children Happens bit by bit Quietly and subtly And you will barely notice it Just like you worried They'll change their group of friends You won't approve of where they go at night To protest Oh, and you'll be disgusted So gross When they start finding things online That you've kept far from their sight We'll convert your children 